Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about LINK. We're going to be looking at the logarithmic regression of LINK prices. So if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on by clicking the bell icon, and check out the Telegram channel, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, as well as in the description below. We have a growing community of around 2,600 people, and you can stay up to date with all the charts that I'm making and the videos that I'm publishing. So. I got a lot of requests to make this video because I've published logarithmic regression for other other coins like Bitcoin and, and Ether, and naturally a lot of people were, were hoping I, I would make something on Chainlink considering its um, you know performance in the bear market. It's outperformed Bitcoin by about 10x during uh, during this bear market. So um, I, I, I want to go ahead and jump in, but I, I also want to to talk about the fact that you know, the way that I normally make these videos is I look at a, a lower, you know, support line. Um, and I wasn't really able to, because there's not very much data, it's really hard to know exactly where I can, I can find this region. You know, do you, do you assume that, you know, this is the, this is the support? Is, is this region the support? There's just not enough data. And when you, when I try to do stuff without, you know, with very little data, then I end up making lines that are probably not going to be correct. Um, so instead, I, I decided to do something a little bit different that I have done for the total cryptocurrency market cap uh, an analysis that I've done before, um, and that is look at a, a like what I would say fair valuation of of Link. Um, now, this is not financial advice. This is just you know me trying to come up with some type of measure of the of the price of Link based on historical data um, that would be useful to you guys. So um, this is what I came up with, and you know, basically, it's looking, it's minimizing the the sum of the logarithmic difference between the price and the the regression line. So it's just minimizing that sum. Is that the perfect method to do it? Um, you know, the, it's up for debate. You know, there's plenty of different ways you could do it. But what I found was ultimately, you know, out of the four different ways I found uh, to try to come up with something that I thought was useful. They basically all looked like this line, um, and so we're just gonna we're gonna use this line as our as our base point. But of course, we're gonna add some level of tolerance to this price, um, just to say, okay, if it's in this region, maybe we would consider this quote unquote fair value based on historical performances of Link. You know, here in the in the bull market, you can see it. You know, it popped up pretty high above one dollar and then came back down to this regression line and then went to the undervalue region. So I would say, you know, this region up here is overvalue, this is undervalue, um, and then this is say the fair value. Okay. Um, this is just one outline, one way to look at it. Now I also created this line down here just because I wanted to note that you know there was a you know a slight trend in, in the price down here to say that this is maybe you know could be considered a, a very strong buy region um, and as far as link is concerned you know I'm not even sure if it would ever visit this region again um, I mean at some point I imagine it would weigh out into infinity in time um, but you know it's still pretty low even at today's prices I mean for it to get back into this band the price would have to drop down to say 50 or 60 cents or so which no I mean remains to be seen if something like that would happen um, but this is is kind of our, our lower bound region here um, on the contrary this would say be our upper bound region so basically these are all the same uh, regression lines um, the co like you know I've only I'm only varying one of the two coefficients um, to get all of these lines and this one is you know uses this po this point up here is the constraint and this one uses um, this point so you can see that the lower bound of that you know the, the red region is corresponds to this peak and the upper bound corresponds to the first peak over here and you know this peak was um, you know fairly impressive itself because you know it came in 2017 uh, 2018 when everything in the market was um, going up essentially but this peak is or this move here I should say is much more impressive um, because a lot of coins did very well during this time but most did not perform this well and out of the coins that did perform this well they most certainly you know for the most part were not holding that level um, for an extended period of time most of them came back down um, so you know as I said it, it's, it can be difficult using logarithmic regression um, to identify say lower bounds and upper bounds 
when the price uh, just seems to, um, for the most part, uh, continue going up even in a bear market. Um, but anyways, you know, this is something, you know, that I came up with to show, say, a fair valuation, say, our, our, our hugely undervalued region, and then way up here is, you know, I would say, um, again, not that it's financial advice, but just to say that this would be our, you know, completely overbought region, um, you know, likely sell region. Um, and, and you can see, you know, we hit it in this point, this point right here in 2018, and as well as we hit the, the lower bound um, in, in 2019. Now, I've also talked before about the 20-week moving average for Bitcoin. And historically, when Bitcoin is above the 20-week moving average, it performs, um, or say, altcoins perform very well. When it's below the 20-week moving average, altcoins perform not so well. So here I've outlined this so that you can quickly see it. Um, when Bitcoin is below the 20 week, the, the points are colored in white. When it's above the 20 week, the points are colored in blue. What do you see? Link tends to have these huge breakout moves when Bitcoin is above the 20 week moving average. So currently the 20 week moving average of Bitcoin is around $7,800. So if you, if you follow the markets, you know, you might, you, you know, if you follow Link anyways, it's also useful to follow Bitcoin because if you can follow Bitcoin and identify, you know, when it's going above the 20 week moving average, then based on historical patterns, you might see a move um, in Link uh, commiserate with what we've seen in the past. Um, so this is, you know, this is one of those things that obviously doesn't have to keep repeating itself. That cycle doesn't have to repeat. But it doesn't mean you can't use historical data to help guide, um, you know, what types of investments that you're making. Um, so currently, Bitcoin is still below the 20-week moving average because you can see the prices in um, these price points are white. But if we were to get above the 20-week moving average, then I would expect that Link would see a nice move um, as well, and, and we would want to see it, you know, Bitcoin get above the 20-week. Now, what's really impressive is, is you know, this move here came. And, and stayed constant for the most part, despite the fact that Bitcoin fell below the 20 week. So that's what's really remarkable with Link um, and is one of the reasons why I've been covering it since, uh, since last year. So um, I want to extend this out a bit because a lot of people are wondering, well, where could this put us at a theoretical speculative bubble in the entire cryptocurrency asset class? Where might it put us? And this is obviously very speculative um, you know, making any type of price prediction um, obviously carries a huge level of uncertainty. And one of the things that I noticed in the crypto space is that most people just throw out numbers, but they don't actually show any reasons why they believe that's the case. They just put a number out there because that's the number that would make them a millionaire um, or help them reach a certain uh, target in their mind, uh, but they have no basis for it. So at least I try to provide some evidence um, the, the validity of the evidence is, is, is you know, a little bit hand wavy, um, but, it, you know, at least hopefully it provides um, a perspective that you might not get anywhere else. So again, please subscribe to the channel if you, if you guys like these, you know, unique perspectives to the cryptocurrency market. So let's extend these out. I've extended it out to 2025. And a lot of people are going to say, well, why do you extend it out so far? Why, why do we think that we need to go this far out. Why don't we just look at say 2021 because that's when the cryptocurrency market is gonna peak, right? Like wouldn't it be 2021? Um, and if you follow my channel, you know you know that my thoughts on this are, you know, I would love it for cryptocurrency, the, the, whole, the asset class as a whole to, to go through a huge speculative bubble by the end of 2021 um, and keep on that four year cycle that so many people think is going to happen. However, I think the evidence suggests otherwise. And quickly, I just want to show what I mean. So this is the cryptocurrency market cap and trend line. Uh, so basically, it's it's doing something very similar to what I've done with Link, um, but obviously expend, it, it, it extends over a decade of data. So you can see when we're undervalued and when we're overvalued in terms of the cryptocurrency market capitalization as a whole. Currently, we're sitting near that very undervalued phase. Um, and I, I anticipate that we're going to stay in this region for an extended period of time. If we look at the percent difference between the peak and the primary regression band, then it looks like this. And this is the, the um, uh, just that percent difference. Red line is the fair valuation. So if, the, if it's going below the red line, that means it's undervalued. 
Um, this is, you know, these three peaks here correspond to the three peaks you see in on, on the chart. And you can see that we're seeing these diminishing returns in terms of the whole cryptocurrency market capitalization. Um, and the time between these bubbles is getting longer. So that leads me to believe that the next bubble will likely be further out. Here I'm putting it on the same chart, superimposing it just so you can try to appreciate um, how this chart is derived from this chart. Again, it's just the percent difference between this and the red line um, for all prices. So you can better identify overvaluation and undervaluation. These are used for say macro level moves in the market. And again, you know, here's another graph of, of just the Bitcoin price, which you know shows diminishing returns as well. As you can see, the slope is getting lower and lower. And if we continue to extend this out, we might expect to see a six-figure Bitcoin sometime in 2023. Again, if you look at market cycle bottoms, you can see that you know the first one, the difference between the first and, and the second was two and a half years. The next one was four years. So a lot of people think we're on a four-year cycle because you know, the halving is, is approximately every four years. I think um, what's more likely is the cycles are lengthening. It's not clear if it's, if it's increasing, you know, on a linear scale or if it's, you know, going to go up exponentially. Um, maybe it's every four years and, you know, this was just some anomaly. Um, don't discount anything. Be prepared for anything. Be prepared to react for anything. Uh, but I think the evidence suggests that you know we're not going to see a speculative bubble peak in the cryptocurrency asset class in 2021. Um, maybe you know something like this is something that I might expect, and this is looking at the ROI um, of Bitcoin over over an extended period of time. So the the running ROI, I think this is yeah this is the one year ROI. So if you're just looking at the one year ROI, it it, it paints things in a different picture than just plotting say the price. So you can see how, how things you know, continue to get extended. And this nicely drawn imaginary line shows you know, these things peaking here, here, and here, and that we would ultimately expect another peak maybe somewhere near this imaginary line um, that would also show us diminishing returns in the cryptocurrency market. Um, or at least for this one, it's, it's for Bitcoin. Um, but ultimately, I think it would be um, projected out to the whole cryptocurrency market. So let's get back to Link because that's what everyone is here for. So with this knowledge in mind, with the idea that the next speculative bubble peak is not until say 2023, plus or minus some tolerance, you know, what is the path that Link might go over the next few years? And, and realistically speaking, um, this really I don't think is bad news for Link holders because Link tends to perform uh, fairly well, even in a bear market. So as long as as long as even the bear market slash accumulation phase continues, and Link just keeps doing its thing, where it, it continues to gain ground on Bitcoin, whether it's a you know whether Bitcoin is above or below the twenty week moving average, but whenever Bitcoin is above it, seeing these huge moves, um, this just gives you more and more time to say accumulate, uh, you know, Link. Over the next say year or so, I'm a big proponent of saying 2019, 2020, and even part of 2021 are the times to accumulate, um, and so this just gives you more time uh, to ultimately accumulate before potentially a breakout speculative bubble going into 2022 and 2023, maybe even 2024. So, if the time of the projected Bitcoin peak is say in the middle of 2023, and this would correspond to something like this line here, then maybe a, a path that we could take would look something like this, where we get up into this, you know, this final speculative bubble region that might range between say $30 up to around $100, you know, in about three years or so. Obviously, this is a very bullish prediction. Even if we were to do something like this, it's not, you know, it wouldn't be completely unheard of for something like this to happen. I mean, if, you know, if Bitcoin dumps down to the 200 week moving average, if we think of an ultimate bearish scenario where it maybe dumps down to the 300 week moving average again, because we did have a wick already down to that point at around $3,800. So don't discount anything, just be prepared for anything. So even in the case of a bearish scenario, you know, maybe we come back down to this lower band at the bottom. Um, but ultimately, smart money 
is looking at is looking at you know the the evidence that we see in the cryptocurrency market to suggest that we don't you know a peak is likely not happening in 2021, um, and that ultimately we, we are we are expecting more likely to see a peak later on than 2021. Um, but again, if it happens in 2021, we will be prepared for it, um, and we're going to be you know you know smart money will be taking profits if we enter into that speculative bubble phase. And I, I have all sorts of videos on my channel that help us identify when that might occur. And it's not just looking at, say, the relative strength index and, and that sort of stuff. I have a lot of custom videos that look at, at, the, at different types of metrics, even risk metrics, to identify when something like that might happen. So I use all the data that I can to suggest when things might happen so that we can plan accordingly, but we're prepared in case something else happens. Um, so again, you know, I just... This this whole video is just meant for you know for for the link holders the link marines to look at something um, that is somewhat based in in data and not just throwing out a number and to try to identify what are likely paths forward over the coming years and obviously one would be if you know if if from a fundamental point of view if if a recession. Um, if this is a, a long and extended recession and people tend to liquidate their high-risk assets and, and Bitcoin dumps um, back down to say the 200-week moving average or further, or further, then be prepared for a move like that. Um, on, the, on the other hand, there is no obvious correlation between cryptocurrency markets and, and the traditional markets. I, I made a video on that in the past. There is really no correlation between them. Just like there's no correlation between gold and 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 the stock markets really, um, so at the same time, you know, we might just keep marching on. Cryptocurrency might just keep doing its thing. Maybe we're going to stay in this regression band that I showed um, uh, back here um, for the total cryptocurrency market cap. So imagine this is say 2023. Maybe we're going to stay in this region for a long time before breaking out. So that is a, is a possibility. Um, just be prepared for anything. Now, the last thing I wanted to say again is, you know, if you if you want, check out the Telegram channel. We have 2,600 members. We could definitely use some more Link Marines in there. If you guys want to join the discussions, we we talk about a lot of different coins and we try to keep things focused on on cryptocurrency related topics. Um, and for those who who like this type of content and want more of it, we I do have a Patreon channel where I do publish a weekly newsletter. Um, or you, I, I don't even know if it's a newsletter is the right word. It's a report on on different analytical topics within cryptocurrency, um, and that comes out uh, tentatively every Sunday for right now. Um, and and well, and as well, we have other other perks um, like a private Telegram channel and a link to a Google Sheet document that has um, various risk metrics and um, and overvaluation, undervaluation, that sort of stuff. Um, so if you want to support the channel, feel free to join that. And if not, uh, at least subscribe to the channel so you can see the future videos. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this is valuable to everyone. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Bye.